Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placote is here with me, ladies and gentlemen. His fresh haircut. I yeah. like it. Thanks, it Jimmy. Makes, it makes the hair look like you have more hair. That's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Important. All right. Uh, that's why I dyed a shit out of my hair, too, because it, oh, it looks thicker. Yeah. Always looks thicker. I don't know what it does. <laughs> looks thicker. Anyway, um, so you know that after, I don't know if you know, but after the Berlin Wall, wall fell, uh, Ronald Reagan made a promise to Russia, the Soviet Union, to Gorbachev, that uh, we wouldn't expand NATO. Well, um, not a big deal. We've totally expanded NATO. We totally backtracked on that, totally went back on our deal. And uh, like, um, here's from Newsweek. This is from, uh, well, just October 17th, October 12th of uh, this last year. U.S. military sends troops to Russian border. Officials say they want peace, not war with Russia. Oh, that's why you send troops to the border. <laughs> You're going to go gonna go up there. They send them with water balloons. That's, that's a, it's a gag. We're trying to get peace. They had gift baskets. Um, uh, by the way, NATO has significantly expanded its military presence near Russia, especially among the three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And Poland. So we're ramping up a Cold War over there. That's what we're doing. The military-industrial complex, as Eisenhower warned us, beware the undue influence of the military-industrial complex, whether we want or not. We got it. And this is what's happening. Three... These four nations were de designated by the U.S. last year to host NATO battle groups. But the multinational coalition has expanded its forces beyond these countries, drawing further Russian fury. So we're super expanding. This is the whole idea. This is why a lot of people voted for Trump, because Trump didn't want to expand our military. He said he was an anti-interventionist. He wanted us to get us out of all these foreign adventures, which is why a lot of people voted for him. Vladimir Shmatinov, head of the Defense Committee for Russia's lower house of parliament, said the country would consider adding more nuclear-capable Iskander ballistic missiles on its side of the border to deter U.S. military buildup in the region. Oh, wait a minute. So we ramp up and then there's an unintended consequence of them ramping up? Or maybe it's not unintended. Maybe they want Russia to ramp up so we can ramp up more. Because who runs our government? The military-industrial complex. Certainly not the people. The people don't want NATO to ramp up. The people don't want more war. We want less war. Um, here, this is from the Global Research. NATO continues to prepare for war with Russia. This is a quote from them. Uh, Even in our most recent history, we've expanded NATO into Poland. We've pushed American troops and NATO troops up to Russian borders. And now for three years, you've had its killings, uh, this killing go on in Ukraine. NATO expansion has only brought hardship and suffering to Europe. That's a guy named Matthew Ho. He's from he's a former State Department official, former captain in the Marines. And he's from the Center for International Policy. Mr. Ho believes that the current governments in both Europe and the United States lack an understanding of history or the consequences of military adventurism. Uh, this is uh, tanks do not create peace. Germany fumes at huge buildup of tanks at Russian borders. German politicians have hit, hit out at the buildup of military hardware and troops in various countries that border Russia. Here's from, and then we did sanctions. So then we did sanctions on Russia after they annexed Crimea, after we backed a neo-Nazi regime to take over the Ukraine. Um, then because Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump and you couldn't really examine a system that gave us Donald Trump. So they decided to pretend it was Russia. So now we've shown you a million times on this show. There's absolutely no evidence to back that up. Uh, a million. So go to look at all the other videos. There isn't any evidence or else someone would be in prison. There isn't any. So and by the way, the former head of the CIA said there ain't going to be any. OK, that's the former head of the CIA said that there ain't going to be any evidence. It ain't coming ever. So they did more sanctions. So then in the House, so they did more sanctions in the United States government against Russia for their meddling in our election, which is a double CK. You know that. Right. Guess what? It was a, it was a 98 to two vote in the Senate. You know who one of the people voted against it? Bernie Sanders. Voted against this bullshit. Um, this, the European Union has delivered a stern warning to the United States over a plan to impose new sanctions on Russia. The European Union didn't even want us to do it. 
It's a stupid political stunt. It's like our Benghazi. It's like now the, de- the left's Benghazi. The corporate Democrats, not the left. The corporate Democrats, Benghazi. So the European Union has delivered a stern warning to the U.S. over a plan to impose new sanctions on Russia, opening up the prospect of a rift between the two allies over how to deal with Moscow's foreign interventions. So European Union didn't want us to do the sanctions. The bill could have what? Unintended unilateral effects. So the United States doesn't know what they're doing. They don't understand the, the history of the region at all. And they don't understand the unintended consequences of bills like this, of not only NATO ramping up, but of the sanctions. This is right from CNN. This is why the commission concluded today that, so well, I don't have to read the rest. And by, so why do I bring all this up? Ron, why do I do it? I'll why do you, you why. bring it up? <laughs> because the Daily Beast which is the anti Bernie was the anti Bernie Sanders rag pro Hillary Clinton. Chelsea sits on the board of Daily Beast. Am I wrong about that? Can you can you double check me on that? I'm pretty sure that there's the Clintons have their fingers in at the Daily Beast, no doubt. Um, here's the here's the uh, headline. This is from the Daily Beast, and lefty news outlets are reporting this. White House official floated withdrawing U.S. forces to please Putin. That's the headline. So they wanted to take back some of those troops like that was an idea. Here's the subheadline. A member of Trump's National Security Council staff had a radical notion to pare back American troops in Europe. You could stop there, but they keep going. They say as a way to curry favor with the Kremlin. So this is the guy who they're who they're pinning this article on. This guy, Kevin Harrington. Who is Kevin Harrington? Nobody. Uh, he is Harrington is the NSC senior official for strategic planning. Sounds impressive, right? He had neither military experience nor significant government experience before joining the White House, but he had an influential credential as a managing director for the Thiel Mar- Macro Hedge Fund. He was close to Trump patron and day de- and ally Peter Thiel. So he's one of Trump's money guys, just like Bet- how did Betsy DeVos get that? They're money people. They give money to them. So some guy gave Trump money. Trump puts him on this thing. He says, hey, maybe we should, let's draw back. Let's try not to start World War III. And a slight, slight uh, thing here. So Chelsea Clinton, she is on the board of the IAC, which owns the Daily Beast. Okay, so So Chelsea Clinton's on the the board of the company that owns the Daily Beast. So this owned by a company that's chair, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So this is from the article, a senior National Security Council official, that guy I just showed you, proposed withdrawing some U.S. military forces from Eastern Europe as an overture to Vladimir Putin during the early days of the Trump presidency, according to two former administration officials. While the proposal was ultimately not adopted, it is the first known case of senior aides to Donald Trump seeking to reposition U.S. military forces to please Putin. <laughs> Was this written in Adam Schiff's office? Or this is, <laughs> did the Daily Beast, did they just, do they just have a fax that comes? Or they just email? How does it work? Fax is old, old school. It's got to be, they just, Adam Schiff wrote this up. They sent it to the Daily Beast. <laughs> and then Spencer Ackerman said, I'll put my name on it. <laughs> Copy, paste, leave. Copy, paste, bang. We're out early today. <laughs> Something that smelled to a colleague like a return on Russia's election time investment in President Trump. Now, normal sane people would consider anybody proposing to pull back our Cold War ramping up as a good thing. Hey, maybe we don't want to ramp up and have more nuclear missiles on the border. Maybe we don't want Russia to retaliate. What what are we doing this for? Remember, Bernie Sanders even voted against those stupid sanctions. Um... And according to the Daily Beast, they took time out to write this thing to let you know that somebody had a sane thought inside the Trump administration and they're letting you know it wasn't. They're selling you out to to, to Russia. That's this is the whole point of this article. Uh, Among Harrington's ideas were a fervent belief that economic sanctions, particularly those on Russia, were ultimately harmful to the United States. Unintended concept. We just showed you from Newsweek. Just said, hey, 
There's a lot of unintended unilateral consequences. Which is why they were against this. Does the Daily Beast tell you that? Of course not. Of course not. Am I being clear on by laying this out? Are you you're, you're getting it yeah. right? Yeah. Um, here's some more from Daily Beast. In March, Harrington proposed lifting U.S. sanctions on Russian oil. Unintended consequences. The European Union already talked about. I sense we were giving something and wasn't clear what we were gaining in return. How about less World War III? How about that? Well, I don't know. You know, we did. We uh, we said we weren't going to expand NATO. Then we super expanded it. We ramped up the Cold War. Now this guy wants to ramp down the Cold War. I don't get it. What's in it for us? <laughs> I don't know. $20 billion would end homelessness in the United States. We just spend an extra $80 billion on bullshit for the military industrial complex. I don't know. What do we get out of this? What do we get out of this? This is literally a question people cannot answer. What do we get out of not ramping up the Cold War anymore? You got to be kidding me. This really is a stunner to some people. What do we get out of de escalating war with a nuclear power? What do we get out of that? Well, peacetime was so long ago, people might just forget. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it cool? I don't even know. What the? According to the ex-colleague, Harrington considered a gesture to the Kremlin that would enable the nascent Trump administration to see if its desire for a friendly relationship with Russia would be reciprocated. It was included. So, hey, maybe we uh, maybe we unilaterally we, we take back some of this Cold War, Cold War isms. <laughs> maybe we ramp down instead of escalate. And we see what happens. Maybe we can have a friendly relationship with the nuclear power. And if you're, if <laughs> what, you're, is, what is wrong with these people? Right. And if you're in the Trump administration, I mean, you have to see this from the perspective of, yeah, this guy is working in the Trump administration. And yeah, he has no prior experience. Most of the people in that administration don't. But you have to, I mean, they observe the world at large. They know what's going on. So, of course, it would be a priority for them to want to have a good diplomatic relationship. relationship. Like, that's just, why would that be surprising to anybody that they would want that? Like, like it would make sense. I was included in a strategy paper that conspicuously to the former official made no mention of Russia as either a competitor or an adversary. Kevin Harrington's former colleague told the Daily Beast that Harrington asked about the prospect of withdrawing or repositioning U.S. forces from the Baltics, nations once part of the Soviet Union and periodically swallowed up by Russia. Um, so the Daily Beast wants us to ramp it up because Trump. So you fear Trump so much you want him to ramp up a Cold War. They have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I guess not. But this guy wanted to do this thing, which they didn't do. No, Trump went along with the military industrial complex. Yes. Oh, so they didn't even do this thing. No. Well, let's write a story about it anyway. Make it look like Trump's in bed with Russia. And then we'll get some lefty leaning outlets to fucking go along with it and repeat it. Smugly. What the fuck? <laughs> people are out of their minds right now. Trump has made people. You think Obama made people out of their minds? You think George Bush made people out of their minds? Trump is making people wish for World War III and shame people who want to de-escalate a Cold War. As Putin puppets. You want to de-escalate a war? You're a Putin puppet. You want to have better relations with a nuclear power? You're a, there's something wrong with you. Shame on you. I mean, Shame you on the goddamn stupid Daily Beast and anybody else who pushes this bullshit story. Shame on you, you out of control fucking maniacs. You overly emotional. I'm, I'm an overly emotional maniac. Somehow I managed to get this right. 
Well, what do people prefer? Like, would you prefer? Because like, I don't like Trump either. But would you prefer they'd be like, well, everybody thinks that we're up to something with Russia. So let's really piss them off. That'll end well. Let's do everything there's to make a lot them of, mad and make them hate us. Like, would you prefer that? Like, there's a lot of why? people. A lot of people are overly emotionally invested in hating Trump and seeing him taken down. I'm overly emotionally invested in stopping World War Three. Those are two totally different things. So, yeah, I get worked up when people are ramping up a Cold War and World War III because they don't like Trump and they're blinded. They haven't had proof for over a year. They don't give a shit. They just keep saying it. Oh, the Russians' investment in our election. What the fuck do you even mean by that? You don't even know what you mean because you don't mean anything. It's just like support the troops. It means nothing anymore. It's disgusting. This is what happens when someone decides, hey, maybe we should ramp down the Cold War. Let's shame that person. Call him a commie. That's literally what's happening. Yeah. Wow. And you wonder why people get their news from YouTube? A Chelsea Clinton rag. That's where people are getting their news now. Okay. Fantastic. That's a great job, Daily Beast. Spencer Ackerman. Fantastic. Nice work. Wow. Any last words to say to this? Uh, wow. Journalism really taking it on the chin <laughs> since Trump became president. Really taking it on the chin. Why, why don't you go do another story about Russian anchor babies? They did that at NBC the other day. Russian anchor babies. That's a story. <laughs> you know, they have universal health care in fucking Russia. We don't have it here. Just so you know. Oh, and why don't we have all these things? Because of the billions and billions and billions we spend on our, on our military. military. Yeah. Right? So You know how much Russia spends on their military a year? $65 billion. We decided to spend 80 extra billion in one year. So now we're spending, you know, they, they say it's around 700, 800 billion. It's way more than that because they don't count lots of stuff in that. Now their their military budget is just a holiday bonus for us. Yeah, that's just that's a, right. It's not even a half a of your bonus. Of. It's like a half of your. It's not even. A, it's like our bonus. <laughs> so go ahead, push this story, you stupid tool of the military industrial complex. You ever think about standing up for uh, sane foreign policy? You ever think about pushing back against fucking the military industrial complex and their minions in the fucking press? You ever think about doing that? That's what you're supposed to do now if you're on the left right now. This is what you're supposed to stand up against, not cheer on more war like a fucking moron on the left does. God damn it. It wasn't enough. You couldn't go along with the Syrian bombings enough. Now you want World War, now they want World War III. And all of this is the cover up because they lost to Trump. God, God save America. There is no God, but God, if there was, I'm hoping I'm wrong. Then then again, then God will appear and then save us. (laughs) Uh, Jesus Christ, please make sure you're subscribed. Uh, They're unsubscribing people. And uh, and make sure you're not subscribed to MSNBC and CNN. They're subscribing people. People are sending us emails saying, hey, all of a sudden I'm subscribed to MSNBC on YouTube. I didn't do that. (laughs) People are telling us that. That's not, I'm not making that up. So, um, Please make sure you do that because they're trying to make it hard for us. And make sure you click that bell so you get a notice when we drop a video. How about come and see our next live show? It's February 16th. That's a Friday in Burbank, California. Link for tickets right there.